It's well established that deficiencies of essential nutrients impairs the immune system. But is there a difference between sufficiency and optimal when it comes to immune health? Are immune boosting foods and supplements backed by science? And what does immune boosting even mean? Let's science it. Hey, welcome to Nourishable. I'm Dr. Lara. This is the second video in a two-part series on immune boosting foods. Link to part one in the video description. The idea of boosting the immune system through food is always enticing. And it feels like there's a greater sense of urgency right now due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Type immune boosting into Google and you'll get a barrage of supplements and top food listicles touting everything from broccoli to berries to oysters. In fact, improving the immune system is the top reason people say they take supplements. Should you? But first, what does it really mean to boost the immune system? Well, boosting the immune system is just a marketing buzzword. Immunity is not just one thing, but rather a complicated system with lots of moving parts. According to Canadian researcher Dr. Kristen Rachel, immune boosting is a phrase that has a health halo around it. But there's no clear definition or scientific evidence to demonstrate what the mechanism is that makes it healthy. Outside of deficiency, there hasn't been good evidence that supplementing with additional nutrients enhances immunity in the general population. The reality is, antibodies are the most reliable way to prevent infections. The only ways to get lasting antibodies are through natural exposure or vaccines. Period. So from this perspective, no food, nutrient, or supplement can truly boost the immune system. But there are less direct ways in which nutrition can set the stage for optimal immune function by maintaining general health. Here are three ways. Preventing chronic disease, reducing inflammation, and maintaining gut health. Chronic health conditions like type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and obesity are risk factors for more severe coronavirus infection. This has been seen with other illnesses too. Obesity is associated with an increased risk of hospitalization for influenza, and type 2 diabetes increases the risk of all types of infections. Nutrition can play a major role in both preventing and reversing these conditions. But here's the thing, megadoses of individual nutrients and super-specific superfoods aren't effective in preventing chronic diseases. It's a long-term healthy dietary pattern that matters. Chronic diseases are prevented by the nutrition on your plate, not in your pills. Another way nutrition sets the stage for immune function is by reducing chronic inflammation. We've established that inflammation is an important tool to fight infections. But when inflammation goes on for too long, then it damages healthy tissues. Chronic, low-grade inflammation occurs when white blood cells are sounding the alarm even when there aren't any active infections. This low level of inflammation stresses the whole body, stacking the deck against the immune system when challenged by an infection. But you can play a role here because what you eat can modify inflammation. Some foods increase chronic inflammation, like added sugar, processed meats, and refined carbs, staples of the Western-style diet. Other foods that are high in plant compounds called phytochemicals reduce inflammation, like berries and leafy greens. Although you may see many anti-inflammatory supplements, the data consensus is that isolated nutrients are not effective. In fact, some studies that fed megadoses had the opposite effect. More isn't necessarily better, and it could be dangerous. So we can't just rely on a pill. On the other hand, there are some overall dietary patterns that reduce chronic inflammation. The Mediterranean diet is one example. It's characterized by high intakes of minimally processed fruits, vegetables, nuts, olive oil, and whole grains, with moderate intake of yogurt, fish, poultry, and red wine. The foundation of fruits and vegetables is especially important to reduce chronic inflammation and, in turn, support the immune system. One study showed that people who ate fewer than five servings of fruits and vegetables per day had a higher risk of being hospitalized for influenza. With fruits and veggies, more matters to reduce chronic inflammation. A third way that nutrition sets the stage for immune function is by maintaining gut health. So far, we've focused on microbes as the invaders, but it turns out that there are many beneficial microbes that naturally populate your gut. You plus your gut microbes makes up your gut microbiome. There are hundreds of different kinds of microbes living in the gut. Specifically, which microbes varies from person to person. Researchers still haven't characterized the ideal microbiome, but what we know so far is that diverse microbiomes are the healthiest. Diverse microbiomes have more kinds of microbes, 
Low microbiome diversity, when there are fewer kinds of microbes, is associated with chronic inflammation. People with less diverse microbiomes are more prone to infection with disease-causing bugs like C. diff, antibiotic-resistant staph, and hepatitis C. When it comes to the microbiome, there is strength in diversity. The good news is that your microbiome is modifiable by diet. Fiber is especially important here. Humans don't have the enzymes to digest fiber, but our microbes do. Fiber comes in many flavors across plant foods. Different microbes have preferences for different fiber flavors. The more kinds of fiber you eat, the more kinds of gut microbes you nourish. While fiber is not an essential nutrient, as in you won't die if you don't eat fiber, you definitely do need fiber if you're aiming for optimal health. And Americans are not eating enough fiber. Recommendations are roughly 30 grams per day for adults. And right now, people are only eating half that. But there are many fiber supplements available on the market. Could it be as easy as just popping a pill with breakfast? Since the goal is to nourish a diverse microbiome, you'll need to eat diverse forms of fiber. Instead of going for isolated individual types of fiber from supplements, aim to get diverse forms from a diversity of plants. The impact of eating different kinds of plants was highlighted in a citizen science study called the American Gut Project. This study showed that people who ate 30 or more different kinds of plants per week had more diverse microbiomes than people who ate five or fewer. So it's not just the amount of plant foods, but also the diversity of plant foods that matters to the microbiome. Outside of overt deficiencies, there are no foods or nutrients that can truly boost the immune system. Sure, listicles of immune-boosting foods include many healthy choices to incorporate into your repertoire, but fixating on just acai berries and turmeric is missing the forest for the trees. Some argue that the whole concept of immune-boosting is dangerous because it highlights unproven quick fixes while detracting focus from important lifestyle habits. Nutrition can play an indirect role in setting the stage for optimal immune function by preventing chronic disease, reducing low-grade inflammation, and supporting a diverse microbiome. You're better off focusing your food dollar on a healthy diet rather than expensive supplements and isolated superfoods. So here are my top three nourishable takeaways. First, don't be deficient in essential nutrients. You probably aren't, but it doesn't hurt to track your diet for a few days or take a daily multivitamin for insurance. Second, megadoses of isolated individual nutrients hasn't proven effective, and it may be risky. Third, eating diverse plant foods is your best protection for general health. Diverse plant foods provide diverse forms of fiber, phytochemicals, and vitamins, naturally packaged into safe and delicious doses. Besides nutrition, other lifestyle factors that set the stage for immune function are not smoking, getting enough sleep, regular physical activity, and managing stress. The best nutrition strategy is to develop a dietary pattern that you can stick with. Built on a foundation of diverse fruits, vegetables, and whole grains with high quality proteins and healthy fats. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. Check out all my references in the video description and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition. Thank you.